right, we're at Camp 24, Great Lakes Paper Company, Camp 24. This is where the camp used to stand. Not anymore. A little few remnants laying around, but not much. So back in 1956, November 30th, about 7 p.m. at night, it was dark. The camp crew had just finished their meals and they were settled down for the night. And they all of a sudden heard a thunderous scream of jet engines go right overhead. They all ran outside and south of the camp, which is down that way somewhere, they witnessed a big fireball and they heard a loud explosion. A very tragic event as in uh, three U.S. airmen lost their lives in this crash. Uh, this is all per the News Chronicle out of Port Arthur, Ontario. It was a B-47 Stratojet. They're about 105 feet long, 120 feet wingspan. Bomber from the U.S. Air Force. They're up in the Arctic doing maneuvers and they were returning back home down to Louisiana in the States. The one plane went into a spin, uncontrollable spin. And they couldn't gain control and they were at about 32,000 feet. And when they got down on the third spin, down to about 26, 27,000 feet, the, uh, the commander of the flight, Major Slane, gave the bailout order and before he even got strapped in and ready to go in his ejection seat the uh, cabin decompressed so he figured someone had bailed out already so he hit the ejection and bailed out so he bailed out at about 26 27 thousand feet and he ended up about 20 miles south of here landed on a frozen lake spent the night and was eventually picked up the next morning by a helicopter and meanwhile camp 18 which is just down the road a bit further they heard an explosion and at camp 1 which is over way over by uh, another big lake they heard an explosion so within an hour the OPP was at, uh, at Camp 1, and so they were organizing a search party. So about 2.20 in the morning, two OPP constables and two bush crew guys headed out and darted the long, strenuous trek through the bush, through snow. They were snowshoeing towards the area where they last saw the the fireball. So this is what we're looking for today. We're looking for the uh, crash site of a B-47 Stratojet bomber, U.S. Air Force. Uh, one survivor, three fatalities. They found uh, chutes unopened in the wreckage, which accounted for uh, two to the personnel. So they, there's never any real word on what happened to the third one. He either bailed out and was never found or he uh, ended up in the wreckage. But the, the plane dove into the ground at about 700 miles an hour, they figure, and uh, got buried in the muskeg about 30 feet down. So there was really no chance of recovering anything. And then we're gonna head down and do a bushwalk, try and uh, find this site. Uh, be a very somber moment moment for us but very uh, historic or historically significant it was never known if uh, the plane carried any nuclear weapons or bombs it was never denied or or uh, said that there was actually on the plane so we're gonna head on over there all right water into the bush here found a piece of aluminum Maybe about six inches across. Looks like it was uh, tubular at one time. Bolted through. Was into the ground. 
stabbed in there pretty good. Almost like it came from a from up high and came down. So it might be in the right area. This spot is something else. Oh, across the bush here. That is definitely from an airplane. I think we're in the debris field. Right beside it. More metal. That's a piece of tire. Getting kind of swampy here. So I think I can definitively say that I am definitely very near. Very near. We have pieces of debris through the bush here. I found a couple more pieces. Definitely aluminum. One eighty one. That must be that's part of a wing, I'm thinking. Maybe. Another piece. Look at this old, old cedar tree. It was huge at one time. And victim of a fire. You see how it's burnt on the inside? That's pretty crazy. That's like, that's a huge, huge cedar. And we found a little bigger piece. It's got uh, something written on it. It looks like TE Station. Not sure what that means, maybe some Air Force personnel could tell me. TE Station. I'm not here souvenir, souvenir hunting. I'm here to document a little piece of history. History from uh, our area. I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody, especially families or, but uh, this, this has to be told from my viewpoint anyways, or recorded and so we're we're trudging through swampy stuff.
I think we're getting near a pond. That might be the impact site. We'll know in a little bit, I guess. All right, we just found a bigger piece of aluminum here. Kind of swampy in here, so I'm trying to stand on the mounds. Pretty sad sight to know that three airmen perished in the swamps of northwestern Ontario. continue on. Alright, I saw an opening. I think I think it's just over here. Oh now this is the impact crater. Some more plain pieces right beside the pond here. Really tough to maneuver through here. Feet are soaking wet. And it's dense. Welcome to northwestern Ontario. Just working our way around to the other side of the pond here. I don't know if you can see down in the water there. Looks like uh, copper wire, bits of metal. I'd like to get some kind of uh, little plaque made up. Just something to mount to one of the trees here. Just to mark this because this is a grave site and I don't see any markers or plaques or anything around here. Pretty sad. I'd like to be able to acknowledge that yes this is a grave site. Tragic event happened here. Um, if you find anything in the bush in this area please don't pick it up and take it home. Just leave it on the site. Out of respect for our families and the uh, deceased crew members. I'm going to head back along the debris field here and see if I can find anything else. Record what's out here. So far, biggest piece has been about eight feet. And another piece of wreckage right here. Another piece over there too I see. Badly crumpled accordion up.
There's the old colors, the drab green, aluminum. Like that, implanted itself with some force. And all kinds of uh, oh, Looks like uh, the cowling off an engine, engine parts there too. That might be the whole engine buried in the ground there. Fairly big piece of aluminum. There's uh, quite a bit of wreckage strewn throughout the bush here. This one's laying right on top of a, a big rock. A rock looks like it's been moved. That's a substantial, that's a landing gear strut or something like that. That's big, that's four, four inches diameter. Maybe someone can tell me what that is. Piece of that metal has a little number on it. Z-60 three or an eight. Looks like an eight A. I don't know what that means. That piece is kind of embedded in the ground and folded up pretty good. Not sure what that is. I don't know what that would be. Some kind of internal. Okay, so I think I got it right now. Looks like 9-18060-3 Boeing. So this plane was built by Boeing. Strut or something. Got a name or a number. Batch 17202. Something 522. 
or five or something like that. Got some other stuff written on there too. I'm not sure what it reads. There's an AD there. Pass some more of that rubber. This looks like matting or something like that. This piece has got some kind of mechanical stamp on there. Another piece of wreckage right there. And a little bigger, thicker piece here. Quarter inch aluminum. Alright, I found a Looks like part of a wire harness. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be anything attached to it. Substantial bundle of wires. Hydraulic line. Now it appears that somebody dragged this piece out of the bush, or this is where it landed and just sat here. It's on the open rock here. Thank you.